We're in a time period now known as Svirasa Omer, and Svirasa Omer is the time period between the holiday of Pesach and the holiday of Shavuot. It spans 49 days, and on a mystical level, this corresponds to the bottommost bodily seven energetic centers that comprise the Tree of Life. We're taught in the Kabbalistic system of the Zohar and of the Arizal Rav Isaac Luria that the Tree of Life mapped onto the body is comprised of 10 Svirot. And these Svirot are 10 energetic centers and 10 different qualities that we all have as a way to embody and to connect to the energy of the universe, which we understand to be Hashem. And we understand in Kabbalah that the smallest and the biggest are fractal and they are relational and they are self-similar. And just like Hashem, the energy of the universe appears and connects through us through these 10 different energies, so too we encompass these different energies mapped onto the body. And we're taught that Keter represents crown, and Chachma represents right brain, Bina represents left brain, Dot is the integration of those two. And those top three, as they oscillate between the thing before it's revealed and then the revelation of thought, those represent the mind spheros, the mochin. But then we have the bottom seven centers, and that corresponds to the right arm, which is chesed, which is loving water and expansion. Um, it's typically more masculine, but I don't think it needs to be gender necessarily, and it could be more associated with sun energy. And then we have the left side, which is Gvura, and Gvura is the sacred no, and it's boundaries, and it is the sacred fire, and it is more moon, and it is more nighttime. It's more restriction. It's more constrainment. It's the ability for the bow to be stretched all the way back through the power of restriction and severity in order for it to double forward. It corresponds to the laughter of Yitzchak, which is the bow stretching all the way back in the restriction, and then it doubles back with a revelation of joy and schok of laughter as the the restriction is revealed to have only been a potent force to allow for a doubling of the very thing itself. And then we have the heart space, which is Tiferet. And this week we just entered the week of Tiferet. And Tiferet corresponds to the attribute of Rachamim, which is compassion, where we have this expansion and loving kindness and water, which all of the sphere of the different energetic centers, there are pros and cons for all of them. So Chesed, the right arm, this loving expanse of water, this can be extremely damaging if water expands beyond the, the vessel that can hold it, it can be immensely destructive. If we're just giving and giving and giving, and if we don't have boundaries, that can be extremely harmful. On the other hand, opening ourselves to providing and giving and sharing is a beautiful thing. And then you have the, the left side, which is the vessels of the gurus to be able to restrict and to confine the flow of water and to be able to hold it with fire a little bit. And also the sacred no, it has its pros and its cons. The hard space of Tiferes is compassion. It's the ability not to necessarily come with the gvura, the fierce fire, but to be able to correct with compassion. And that's the heart space. And Tiferis is also balancing. So the way the spheros works, it's one, two, and then three, and then all the way, all the way down into Machut. So this week we should... Uh, every night is a different energy, and we count, and the Jewish day starts at night, of course, because, you know... Things don't just happen and they're planted in the quiet and in the dark moments and in the caves of our lives and in the earth. And it takes time for them to root and to be nourished in order for them to grow. But we enter this week of Tiferis, which is balance, and the world is pretty fucked up right now. And hopefully we can bring a little bit of compassion and balance into that.